Yes. Hello and welcome everyone to Mulberry Town Partners Career Conversation. I'll give everybody just a few moments to log on. Great, looks like everybody is successfully rolling in. So again, welcome to Mulberry Talent Partners Career Conversation. My name is Kelsey and I am Mulberry's Talent Acquisition Coordinator. Just a little bit more about Mulberry. We are a full service recruiting and staffing agency headquartered in Portland, Oregon with a location in the Silicon Valley. We specialize in the professional placements of human resources, professional and financial office, payroll and operations positions with direct hire, temp to hire and temporary opportunities. I would encourage you to check out our website at mulberrytalent.com to see recordings of our previous career conversations, check out our upcoming conversations, and check out our job opportunities, which we update on a regular basis. So jumping into introductions, we are joined by Mulberry's very own Lauren Francis and Laura Back. Lauren is our fabulous founder and president. She started Mulberry back in June of 2017 and comes with over 25 years of talent acquisition experience. Laura is our amazing director of marketing and events and has been with Mulberry since 2017 as well. So today they will be speaking about social media, LinkedIn, and networking strategies. And we want today to be super interactive, so don't shy away from using the Q&A function in Zoom, and we will try to get to any and all questions that come in. So without further ado, I'd like to pass it off to Lauren and Laura. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you, Kelsey. Good afternoon, everyone. We're so happy to be here with you today. Uh, Laura and the rest of the team has worked really hard to bring this information to you, so we hope you find it valuable. So Laura, take it away. Sure. I'm so glad to be here with you today, Lauren and Kelsey. Um, I know that we are at Mulberry Talent Partners. We're really um, passionate about social media and LinkedIn and networking. So today we're going to do just sort of a brief surface overview of all three of those things. Um, and I hope that you find this to be informative. And like Kelsey said, please use the Q&A function. If you have any question that comes up, please go on ahead and submit it. We'd love to, we'd love to hear from you. So jumping right in, social media. Why does it matter to me as a job seeker? Well, there are a lot of surveys out there. We went on ahead and picked out just one from Career Builder that they did in 2018. And they've done lots of these over the years and a lot of the results seem to be really similar. Uh, so this was over just a thousand hiring and HR managers surveyed about what they look for um, when they're basically starting the process of interviewing a candidate. So over 70% of employers Google candidates. So you can safely assume that when you're applying for a job and submitting your resume that a hiring manager will likely Google you. 57% uh, of hiring managers made the decision not to hire a candidate based on what they found online. And the reasons for that really ran the gamut. Um, some of them included divisive or discriminatory comments, uh, posting too much online, oversharing, um, all the way up to talking negatively about an employer online, which is, we, I think we all know is a really big no-no, but it still does happen. So sometimes people then say, well, should I just go on ahead and make everything private? Should I shut down all of my social media? And the answer to that is no, because 47% of hiring managers were less likely to schedule an interview with a candidate if they couldn't find them online. You know, and another tip about that, Laura, is on, on your resume, it's important to share your LinkedIn link mm -hmm. because what, what you want to do is you want to make it easy for the hiring manager to, to quickly be able to find you online. That's, that's so true because then they can find your professionally curated LinkedIn that provides them with all the information that you want them to know. So they're not kind of going on a Google hunt for you. So just some social media basics. It's important to check your privacy settings regularly. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram can often change those and opt you into things that you haven't necessarily even agreed to. Um, so it's important to check those out and to Google yourself. See what shows up when you Google. Are tweets from maybe 10, 15 years ago showing up that you really wouldn't want a hiring manager to find as your first impression. So go on ahead and clean those up. If any of your pages are public and you'd like to keep them public, which I think is an okay thing to do, be sure to keep it professional and refrain from divisive topics, negative talk about employers, drinking, partying, photos, anything that you wouldn't want to be an employer's first impression of you. Um, and then just circling back to that 47% of hiring managers not contacting people if they can't find them online, having an online presence, especially in this day and age, is really important as long as it's polished and fits in with your personal brand. So just be aware. 
So I wanted to do a quick poll for everyone. So if you could log in to LinkedIn, go to your profile, take a look at what your profile strength level is. I want to know who we have here. Um, I'll give everyone just a little bit of time to respond. Uh, Lauren, what's your strength level? Well, it's an all-star thanks to my team. <laughs> we, we take a lot of time and work together to get it to that level, but it's something that, that we, we regularly uh, address. And your profile should be treated the same thing as a living resume, always adding and updating when you gain new skills, certifications, and publications. Mm -hmm. Kelsey, how about you? So I'm actually an intermediate, so I have some work to do. And I'm going to take these tips and update my profile. Great. And full disclosure, I'm also at Intermediate. So some of the things I'm sharing today are things that I actually need to, to go on and update myself. So it's, it's, it's definitely a work in progress. So people have been responding. Thank you. Um, it looks like we have a mix of Intermediate, Advanced, and All-Star. So it seems like we're all in kind of good shape. I don't see any beginners. So, so that's great. All right. And it looks like we have a few questions um, that are all very similar. And it's, how do you find the strength on your profile? Gotcha. So if you log into LinkedIn and just click on your, um, I think in the top left, you could click to go to your own profile. And there's a box towards the top that talks about your strength level. Um, and then it kind of gives you steps that you can take to get to the next one. So if you still can't find it, let us, let us know. Okay. Were all the questions the same? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to go on ahead and end the poll, but it looks like a mix of intermediate, advanced, and all-star. So good job, guys. Yeah, that's great. There we go. And there are the results. Okay. So thank you guys for participating. Okay. So jumping into how to update your LinkedIn profile. So the first one is the LinkedIn profile photo. First and most important, it should look like you. Well, I guess the most important is that you should actually have a picture, never have a blank profile picture. So that's step number one. But the second is that it should look like you. And so what I mean by that is don't have one from 10, 15, 20 years ago. It should look like how you are now. And if you're someone who regularly, you know, colors your hair, changes your appearance, try to have it as up to date as possible. And the reason that we do this is because when a hiring manager goes to sit down with you, um, they're going to be, they have a picture of you in their mind. And so you want them to feel comfortable as soon as you guys sit down, either in person uh, when things you know, go back to normal or on Zoom, you don't wanna surprise them and not look anything like your profile photo and then they wonder if it's the same person. Use a high res image. And so in this day and age, we all have an iPhone or some other sort of smartphone in our hand that take high resolution images. So this shouldn't be a problem, but it's always a good thing to just check and make sure that when you upload your profile photo, it's not blurry or pixelated. Your face and only your face should take up about 60% of the frame. So don't have your dog behind your shoulder or have it be your wedding photo with your, with your, your spouse. Um, you just want it to be just you. So it's focusing on you. No selfies. We don't want to have your arm in the picture. I know it's a little bit hard with the pandemic, but I think we can probably get clever in, in setting ourselves up to do an updated photo. Choose a simple background. What I mean by that is don't be in the middle of Walt Disney World with thousands of people behind you or in the, or in the middle of Times Square, even though that's very exciting. Um, you want it to just be nature or maybe a nice piece of artwork from your home or from your office right behind you. Um, just something that's not gonna distract the person from your face. And then the last one is to dress professionally. And I know this means a lot of different things to every different person because organizations are so different these days. But what it means to me is to dress as you would on your first day at the job, or maybe when your CEO is going to be visiting the office. So if you typically wear a suit and tie, then wear a suit and tie in the photo, but don't get overly dressed up, but also don't get underdressed uh, for the photo. So moving into headlines, this is something that we get asked about a lot and it is a little bit confusing. So when you set up your LinkedIn profile, what it automatically does is put your job title and the organization that you're with, which is okay because at least you're getting that keyword of your job title, which we'll get to in a minute. But I've seen a trend is that some people when they're looking for work specifically will put in seeking new opportunities. And so you'll see these five candidates all in the Sacramento area are seeking new opportunities. But as a recruiter, 
This doesn't tell me what kind of jobs they're looking for, what their experience is, what they could bring to the table. All it does is tell me that they're unemployed and looking for a job, which is fine. We've all been there. Um, but they're not doing any service to themselves in terms of keywords, because I can tell you right now, a recruiter or a hiring manager on LinkedIn is not gonna log in and type in seeking new opportunities when they're looking for a specific candidate. So these candidates, unfortunately, are missing out. So and it's also important to note that we recruiters, uh, internal recruiters, hiring managers, and recruiters like those of us at Mulberry, spend a lot of time in LinkedIn Recruiter. And so we look at titles. And I know Laura is going to go into that in a minute. But titles are critically important because we have options for titles. And we also have options for other things like industry or keywords. And so the, 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 it's actually it's, it's actually somewhat complicated. But it's also once you get used to it as a recruiter, you, you're able to kind of figure out how you can find and get closest to the, the candidate profile that you're seeking. Mm -hmm. And so Laura's going to share a little bit more about that, but it does make a big difference in, in getting identified in, in, this, in this way. Right, right. It's all about kind of thinking of your LinkedIn profile like Google. Right. right? We go into Google and we're not going to type in seeking new you know, seeking new opportunities candidates, we're going to be looking for a specific candidate. So you are helping the recruiter by help by helping to show up in their in their searches. So you sort of have to put yourself in that thought process, like what would a recruiter or hiring manager look for? So we'll talk a little bit about the specifics for that. So again, avoid things like seeking new opportunities, open to new opportunities, unemployed, that's really doing a disservice. Um, to showing up in, in searches. So focus instead on keywords, hard skills, and job titles. So my suggestion would be to download five to 10 job descriptions for things that you're really interested in. Uh, you could go onto a website like WordCloud where it would pull out all of those top keywords and you can see what might be able to fit into your headline. Another important thing is to put in what you're looking for. And we'll see on the next slide some examples of that. Um, but say I'm an HR generalist uh, with employee relations or labor relations experience, and that's really what you want to focus on. So you would find a way to put those into your headline. And I'll show you what that looks like. Avoid fluff words like experienced, unique, rock star, wizard. We've seen it all. Um, again, a recruiter is not going to type in um, administrative wizard, right? They're going to look for an administrative assistant. So I think sometimes we want to get a little cute, but it might do a disservice to you in terms of showing up. And then put your certifications after your name if you can to save space. So that would be things like PMP, MBA, PHR. So you can take those out of your headline and put them uh, behind your name. So here are some examples where I think that people did a good job on their headline. Here is someone who is a recent college graduate. Um, so in this case, I think it's okay that they put aspiring human resources associate and then they're letting us know that they were focused on getting a degree in HR, which is wonderful. And then here they've done some human resources assistant work. And so that's another keyword that's gonna help them in searches. Here, I really like what this person did. So they put human resources assist assistant and HR coordinator. So human resources and HR. Two different ways that a recruiter or a hiring manager could search for that specific skill set. Now, if she just had HR, maybe she wouldn't show up in human resources. It depends on how she's put those keywords into her profile and into her headline. So they've got the two jobs that they're sort of looking to target, even though they're similar, they're labeled differently at different organizations. And then they have an HR certificate from UC Berkeley, which would be too long to put in their name. So it was appropriate here. Moving down, we have someone who's a little bit more senior, a global HR operations leader, executive HR business partner. Here, what they're missing out on is not having that human resources spelled out in two different ways. So that's something to, to think about. Um, and then here they put technology geek, which I think they can sort of get away with because they are more senior. Um, but again, it sort of just depends on your experience. If you're a recent college graduate, I wouldn't necessarily recommend to, to use up valuable keywords with the word geek. Right, and also, you know, you want it to match you. Like I would, I would tend not to do that um, because I don't get creative that way. <laughs> but I think it has to match your brand and your profile and who you are as a person. Um, the other thing I'll go back up to the second profile mm -hmm. is that when she writes out, you know, human resources 
an a or HR coordinator, sometimes in recruiter, you could just, you'll, you might just type in HR uh, and she will still come up in that search it, or sometimes they'll, they'll, we'll just type in, you know, the actual word and that creates a problem if, if you're not following uh, this particular example. Right, right. You want to, you want to put, put the most valuable keywords in there. And another thing I want to point out, there's no example of it here, but if you're admit, say you're an administrative assistant, don't abbreviate assistant with A-S-S-T because if someone searches for administrative assistant, you don't have that appropriate keyword in there. And again, this isn't the end all be all in terms of showing up in searches, but it's just, um, think of it as just boosting your way up um, in recruiter searches. I will, I will point out too that this was, it, it hasn't, I don't know, I think meant for the last several years, uh, it's it's been, I don't know, just focused on, the keywords and some of these searches and how we present ourselves. And that wasn't the case several years ago. And, and so it's important to know that this is becoming more the norm where people in the past have just, you know, they'll, you know, they'll find me or I'll apply to a job. Well, we all know that when you apply to a job, you're not always going to be seen because of the way the um, applicant tracking systems work. So right. more and more employers are, are, are going to the process of looking for people and looking for their profiles. So this is this is this is important to take note of. Definitely. We have a couple of questions that have come in. So Jeff is wondering um, your thoughts for this section if your skills and interests match two different positions. So for example, account management and leadership slash management. In terms of putting the skills into the headline. I believe so. Okay. So Laura, don't, wouldn't you think that, so someone's looking for two different kinds of roles, like a leadership role? Is that what you're? Check the question again. Yeah, ask the question again. Okay, so Jeff says, thoughts for this section if your skills and interests match two different positions. For example, account management and leadership, leadership slash management. I think that you would probably find a way to incorporate both of those um, into your headline. Absolutely. Or maybe if you're, maybe if you're struggling and, and you find that you're getting more interest for one role, maybe you focus on that one role because you also don't want to look too divided. Would you, would you agree, Lauren? Yeah, I would. Cause you don't want to be wishy-washy as a candidate. Oh, maybe I'll do this if they're not that similar of a role. So maybe you, you need to think about, you know, being a little bit more targeted. Right. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay, and the second question is from Amy asking if we should just take off open to work on our profile in general. We're getting to that Great question. We're going to get there. I promise. <laughs> Great question. Thank Good you. question, Amy. Thank you. Okay, uh, just real quickly, I wanted to show this is so this here is when someone is just searching on on LinkedIn. And here is when um, we're in recruiter and there would be a picture of the individual right here as well. So here you can see that the headline did not get cut off. So you would see the, the full one and she's, this particular individual has a pretty long title, um, but that actually covers some of those keywords. And then down here, it shows us that they're open to work. So this again is just on the recruiter side. So I think this is a good segue into talking about uh, the open to work feature on LinkedIn. So really quick, Laura, to, yeah. you don't have to go back to the slide, but I think there also are a lot of different titles in different companies. There's a lot of uh, progressive companies that are using titles in very creative ways, which is fabulous. Yeah. It doesn't always show up in a search, like uh, you know, people, ops, engagement, director. Great, right. fun title, absolutely. Uh, you would need, to, if that's your title, that's great, but then you'd have to maybe say, okay, what is the what is the more I don't know traditional title? And so if it's HR director, make sure you put that in there. Right, right. I think that's a good point. And I think that goes back to looking at job descriptions that you're interested in, mm -hmm. so looking at what those titles are, because that's what you want to be targeting. So don't get too creative if all the jobs you want are HR director, right? And so just kind of focusing on those keywords. That's a really good point, Lauren. So open to work, this comes up a lot um, and you'll probably hear different advice 
uh, depending on who you talk to, but here's what we recommend. So we would say if you're looking for work, you should definitely use the open to work feature and fill it out to its full ability. So putting in the job titles that you're looking for. Again, so if you're looking for um, administrative assistant and executive assistant, you wanna make sure that you put both of those in. Um, the locations that you're looking for, the different job types, full-time, part-time, remote, et cetera. We would recommend that you do for recruiters only. If you do all LinkedIn members, you've seen it online, it shows this uh, green open to work feature, which I think can be good and bad. I think with hiring managers and recruiters, there might be an unintended bias against people who are unemployed. Um, and so they often want that hard to find or hard to get candidate. And so if you're immediately putting, you know, your unemployed green flag out, you don't, you don't want to have an unfair advantage against you to start with. Um, and so it's, I think it's just one of those things, but say you've been look, looking for six months and you have it set to recruiters only, maybe you try the green open to work feature um, and just see if it makes a difference in your job search. But I would love to hear what others have done. So if you wanna use the chat function here um, and then we can see others experience with open to work because it's one of those things they've, they've introduced it, they've made changes. And so it's sort of ebbing and flowing and our advice may be different in six months time. The other thing to do on LinkedIn is to set up job alerts if you haven't already. So you can set up job alerts for specific job titles and companies. And the other important thing is to follow the companies that you're interested in working for. Um, and then there are these two settings that I think are really important for you to go in and modify if you're act actively looking. Um, so you would go to settings and privacy and then job seeking preferences is down on the left. So share your profile when you click to apply. So what that does, if it takes you to an outside job board where you would go and complete the application, it sends a signal to the recruiter that you have clicked to go to apply. So they would not only see your application in their ATS system, uh, but they would also get to have a little preview of your profile, which is really great. And then the other one is to signal your interest to recruiters at companies that you've created job alerts for. So if you wanna work for Nike, go on ahead and set up a job alert for Nike and it could alert recruiters at Nike that you're interested in working for their organization. So these are just two ways for you to get more exposure as a candidate. And do you, do you think, maybe we could do a poll to see how many people are familiar or not familiar with this uh, particular, uh, these settings? We can't add a poll, but you could go on ahead and let me know, let us know in the chat feature um, if that's something that you've already used and then we can kind of look at that at the end. That would be fun. Okay, and then finally, building out your profile. So we always recommend that you customize your URL. And so to get to this setting, you would just go again to your profile. And in the top right corner, there's this edit public profile and URL. This is really important because like Lauren said in the beginning, we recommend that you put your LinkedIn URL link um, at the top of your resume so that a hiring manager could go automatically there. And so if you have it just as is, it'll be linkedin.com slash you know, one, two, three, four, five, right? Instead, you could have it be linkedin.com slash Laura Back, which right. is a yeah. lot more professional and polished and tech savvy, right? It's, it's also, you, it's, it's not just, you don't lead with your LinkedIn profile. It right. has your name and your phone number and, right. your, and your email and, you know. Right. And yeah, it's, it's in your contact information. Yeah. <laughs> Start with your name. I have a quick question. Anyone is wondering, what is premium profile badge? Should I be toggled on or off? Premium profile badge. I think that's if you are paying for premium settings, um, which I think that there are pros that come with that. I think that you're able to see who has looked at your profile um, as long as they have that setting toggled on, um, which could be helpful because then if it was a recruiter who was looking at your profile, you could go on ahead and send them a message or a hiring manager. Um, I think it's pretty costly, so I, I'd have to do a little bit more research to see if, if it was a, a good idea for job seekers to be using it. Well, when we were in 2000, 2008 to 2011, when it was really, the job market was just brutal. Yeah. Uh, so many people would reach out to me because they noticed that I was looking at their profile, and I really appreciated that. Uh, and, and, you know, some people won't reach back out to you, but what'll happen is, and I think, I think it's important to know, oh, somebody just wrote that it's $29.99 a month. So that's, that's great. Um, but people will not 
don't, I wouldn't expect people to reach back out to you, but it's noted that you have reached out to them, obviously. You know, I will be one that would most likely return your message. I wouldn't expect everyone, let's say busy recruiters at a larger company to be able to do that, but it is very helpful to, to have that information from you. Yeah. And you could always try it out and cancel it, right? Yeah. It's not a long-term commitment. So if you're just starting your job search, maybe it's a good idea to go on ahead and, and try it. Mm -hmm. uh, check your public profile settings. So again, you don't want it to necessarily be 100% locked down. You want hiring managers to be able to find you and view your relevant information so you can control everything that gets seen by the public. Write a summary in the first person. If you have a little bit of writer's block, I'd encourage you to find profiles that you like and use that for a little bit of inspiration. Obviously not copying their, their work, but sometimes it's good to sort of get those ideas flowing. Uh, continue to focus on keywords that are relevant to your job search and sprinkling those throughout your profile. Tailor your skills to the roles that you desire. So make sure you don't highlight skills from a job that you had 10 years ago, even if you had a lot of recommendations, you want it to be really hyper-focused to the job that you're looking for now. And then ask for recommendations from current, former colleagues, uh, supervisors. It's really important to, to build out that feature. All right, so this question comes up a lot, Lauren. So it's how can I connect with individuals that I'd like to know specifically on something like LinkedIn? Uh, first and, and um, I think most important is to write out your own introduction to share with your existing connections. And the reason for that is that you're asking someone for something, you're asking most likely a very busy person. And so if you make it easy for them to be able to share your profile and your resume to, with someone, it's, it just, it, it, it releases the burden from them to have to do that. Uh, second, turn your network to, to, to ask for help in making a connection with the individuals you've identified. And so um, what that means is you, you want to, you know, you're, you're, you're wanting to create those connections and, 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 and also to turn to your network. Uh, and, and so then they know that you're, that you're looking at that time. Ask to not be CC'd on the introduction email. This is really important because what it does is if, if your contact is reaching out to, you know, one of theirs, what happens is the, con the contact gets, is, is burdened with having to respond. And sometimes they're not able to respond or sometimes they're able to respond uh, maybe in a week or two. So it's important to, to not have the CC, they can take it, take the information and then reach out to you directly. Um, allow your connections at least a week, I just mentioned that, to respond uh, and circle back with a gracious check-in message. So for example, if someone hasn't reached back out to you, you wanna make sure that you give them at least a week and then send a short brief message. Once you've made the connection with the new individual, always circle back to your network contact and thank them and then share the status, share where you are in your job search because you've asked them, you've involved them in your job search. So you wanna make sure that they're aware of what, what's happening for you. I know we're running close out of time, but I hope that people hang in there for a few more minutes. I think we'll fit it in. Okay. Um, so Lauren, when somebody has built their network, what are some strategies for taking care of and cultivating that network? So follow them on LinkedIn and be sure to like and comment on their posts. This is so important that you're showing engagement and involvement and interest. Uh, create an, a system to check in with your close network contacts quarterly or twice a year. Uh, right now, uh, we're, it makes we're, it's so much easier to connect with people. People are used to having a coffee Zoom. It doesn't take a lot of time. It's easy to grab someone on their calendar. Share your own professional updates, such as certifications, graduation, job, or location changes. This makes your profile active, engaged, and, and those are important um, celebrations. If you've requested an introduction or recommendation, be sure to return the favor. Don't forget, you know, in, in months or years following uh, to, 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 to remember how you were helped and, and, and uh, to do the same. That's great advice, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Kelsey, did we have any other questions that came, that came in or responses to the open to work feature? Um, yes, so Amy has one more question, and it's, should we have a public profile badge? 
She says, not even sure what that is. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. So sure that again, is. LinkedIn is always revealing all these new features. Yeah. So it's sort of hard to keep up with it. So I'm going to write it down um, and we'll be sending a follow-up email um, yeah. early next week. Yeah. Amy, thank you for all of your participation today. It's been oh, great. great. Yeah. Yeah. And also Jeff um, just had some information. He says premium also gives you access to all of the LinkedIn classes and trainings. So you can have access through your local library for free. That is so true. And I hear they're fabulous. They're really well done. It looks like um, one just came in. Is it better to network or communicate using the LinkedIn inbox or asking for their emails? I think the inbox is preferred, especially if it's someone you don't know. Yeah, I agree. I think you're less likely to get lost in the mix too. You know, and one thing we are doing, uh, we're creating a, a toolkit and we'll be revealing that, I believe, in the next couple of weeks. But one of the things we're doing is we're showing samples of what a appropriate or an effective message when you're reaching out to someone for the first time. And then an effective words and language and examples of follow-ups. So right. we, hope, we hope that this is helpful because I hear this all the time where you give advice. Well, just reach out to your network. Well, what does that really mean? And, and how, what do you say and how do you say it? And the, 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 the words you use and the words you choose and the, the, the um, what is it, the tone of how you uh, communicate in this way is just critically important. And I think we have a lot to, 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 to share about that. Right, and we'll share that toolkit with everybody who registered today. So that'll come to your inbox um, in the next couple of weeks. Yes, thanks for joining us today. We have a couple more uh, announcements to make, right? Yeah, so we have a really exciting lineup for 2021 for Career Conversations. So we will be back on February, February 11th with Lauren and Laura again, and they will be speaking about Communications 101, so cover letters and thank you notes, um, very helpful tips regarding that. And then on February 18th, we will be joined by Katie Kelly. She is the author of Career Courage, discover your passion, step out of your comfort zone and create the success you want. So that's one you won't wanna miss. And then on March 4th is Lisa Orbe Austin. She is going to speak to us about overcoming imposter syndrome and owning your greatness. And here are a few ways to stay in touch with us. So feel free to check us out on LinkedIn, connect with Lauren, Laura, they would love to be connected with you or feel free to email us as well. Um, and we wanted to just thank you for choosing to fly with Mulberry. We know that you have many different options when it comes to webinars, and we're so happy that you chose ours. And I want to thank Laura and Lauren for a very informative and very interactive conversation today. Oh, thanks, Kelsey. This was great, really. And I, I just have seen so many wonderful thank yous and comments, and we want to provide as much uh, information to our, our, our community as possible. And um, we're just really glad you're here. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. There will be a short survey at the end. If you could complete it, we would love your feedback. And we hope to see you on February 11th. Thanks, everybody. Have Bye. a good week. Bye.